Have you ever pondered the significance of secure headers in web development? Well, let's dive into it. Secure headers are like silent guardians of your website. They form an essential part of web development, providing a robust line of defense against various potential attacks. Think of them as a protective barrier that shields your website from the perils of the digital world. They help to secure your site against threats like cross-site scripting, XSS, clickjacking, and many other types of code injection attacks. One such powerful secure header is the Content Security Policy, or CSP for short. CSP serves as a preventive measure, creating a whitelist of sources of trusted content, minimizing the risk of injection attacks. It's like having a bouncer at the door of your website, only letting in the trusted sources. So, secure headers, including CSP, play a crucial role in ensuring the security of a website. Now, you might be wondering, how does one implement a content security policy? Well, before we dive into the implementation, let's first understand what a content security policy, or CSP, is all about. CSP is a security measure that helps prevent certain types of attacks, including cross-site scripting, also known as XSS. It does this by specifying the domains that a browser should consider as valid sources of executable scripts. By restricting the sources, we can prevent malicious scripts from unexpected sources from running, thereby securing our web pages. So, how does CSP work? It's pretty straightforward. CSP works by including specific HTTP headers in the response from a server. These headers inform the browser about the sources from which it is allowed to load content. This could be scripts, style sheets, images, or even where to submit form data. Now let's talk about implementing CSP. First things first, you need to create a policy. A CSP policy is simply a string that contains the policy directives. These directives define the allowed sources of content for your website. For instance, the directive default SRC self allows content loading only from the site's own origin. Each directive targets a specific type of content. For example, script SRC restricts where scripts can be loaded from, while IMG SRC limits the sources of images. There are many more directives you can use to tailor your policy to your specific needs. Once you have your policy, it's time to set it up. This is done by adding the Content Security Policy HTTP header to your web pages. The value of this header is the policy that you've just created. Here's a simple example. If you wanted to ensure that all content is loaded from your site's own origin, you'd set the Content Security Policy header to Default SRC Self. This means that the browser will block any content that doesn't come from the site's own origin. That's the first half of our guide on implementing CSP. Intriguing, isn't it? Let's dive deeper into the implementation of content security policy. Now that we have the basic structure of a CSP in place, it's time to refine our policy by adding more specific directives. These directives allow us to control which sources of content are trusted and should be permitted to load on our website. For example, let's say we want to allow scripts only from our own site and a trusted external site. We would add a script SRC directive to our policy like this. Script SRC self trusted-site.com. This tells the browser to only load scripts from these two sources, blocking all others. Now, let's discuss the report URI directive. This is a powerful tool that helps in monitoring CSP violations. The Report URI Directive specifies where the browser should send reports if it blocks any content due to your CSP. This can be immensely helpful in detecting and fixing any potential issues with your policy. In practice, it would look something like this. Report URI slash CSP Report Endpoint. This tells the browser to send any CSP violation reports to the slash CSP Report Endpoint on your site. Remember, implementing a CSP is a continuous process. It's not a set and forget kind of thing. You need to monitor, refine, and update your policy as your site evolves. With that, we've covered the basics of implementing a content security policy. But remember, 
this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more to learn and explore in the realm of web security. Let's quickly recap what we've learned today. Secure headers are vital in web development as they protect against numerous web vulnerabilities. Among these, the content security policy stands out, acting as a strong line of defense against cross-site scripting attacks. We've walked through the steps to implement a CSP from understanding its syntax to actual deployment. Remember, a secure website is a trusted website, so make use of secure headers and best practices in your web development journey.